Science is a steady progression into the future. Every day, more and more scientific evidence is discovered, and probably the field that has the most of this is paleontology. And as we discovered in the top 13 most inaccurate fossil reconstructions, most of the time scientific theories about paleontology turn out to be wrong, and sometimes way off. But sometimes this is actually not the case. A very rare amount of times, paleontologists make theories about prehistoric creatures that actually turn out to be correct, sometimes long before any conclusive evidence is discovered. Today, we will examine the top four paleontology theories and speculations that actually turned out to be true. So sit down and prepare to be amazed by these scientists' abilities to predict the future. Er, the past. Future of the past? Past of the future. You, you get the idea. Number 4. Filter Feeding Anomaloacrids In 2013, the creators of the highly praised paleontology book, All Yesterdays, a book focused on correcting the way we should view prehistoric creatures, created a contest called All Your Yesterdays. In this contest, paleoartists would create speculative organs and behaviors for prehistoric animals, submitting their work to the creators for a chance to be featured in it. The book can be found online for free, link in the description. One of those artists was John Masaros. For the contest, John Masaros created a speculative animal based on the shrimp-like Cambrian predator Anomalocaris. These armored arthropods, closest related to modern insects, were known as the first super predators. They were the sharks of the Cambrian, and used their grasping claw arms to violently snatch and crush prey. For the contest, John Masaros created a speculative filter-feeding Anomalocrid that fed on plankton and microorganisms, similar to some modern-day whales and sharks. This anomaloacrid, which he named the Cetichiris, meaning whale shrimp, used their brush-like grasping claws as filter-feeding devices to catch passing microorganisms. They were the gentle giants of the Cambrian and filled a niche similar to modern whales. Thankfully, this submission made it into the contest and was simply thought of a cool idea with no real scientific evidence to back it up. But, in 2014, a whole year later, paleontologists discovered something revolutionary. Previously, scientists had only discovered large suspension feeding or filter feeding organisms only as far back as the Mesozoic, as they were exhibited in bony fishes during the time of the dinosaurs. There were no suspension feeding organisms from the Paleozoic, but this all changed with the discovery of Tamisiocaris borealis. Scientists had discovered the claw of an unknown anomalocrid, but instead of being used for killing and crushing prey, this one having long, delicate spines with bristles was used for capturing microorganisms and plankton. A filter-feeding anomaloacrid had been discovered, just as John Marzanos predicted. As an appreciation for his prehistoric speculation skills, they named the new animal group the Cetichiris after the name he gave his speculative drawings. Number 3. Four-Winged Dinosaurs this one was predicted multiple times throughout history. Before we understood and knew the extent of feathers and dinosaurs and the evolution of birds, scientists had to speculate. It all started in 1915. Naturalist William Beebe hypothesized that, at some point during the evolution of birds, four-winged animals were produced. William speculated that some reptiles developed feathers by gliding off trees. He predicted a four-winged reptile with flight feathers on all fours once existed. He called it Tetrapteryx. Hmm, sounds familiar. Whatever. In 1915, he drew this drawing of a completely speculative animal. Note, this theory was made decades before the first paleontologists started to believe in feathered dinosaurs. A few artists were inspired by William's theory, featuring his four-winged bird reptiles in scientific books. Animators in the Disney animated movie Fantasia even illustrated one of these four-winged reptile birds in The Rite of Spring. Eventually, in the 1970s, with the discovery of dromaeosaurs and bird-like dinosaurs, the four-winged dinosaur bird theories were put to rest. Until they were re-envisioned by Dougal Dixon in The Future is Wild, a documentary about the future evolution of modern animals. He created a speculative four-winged bird, which he called the Great Blue Wind Runner. Try saying that three times fast. He believes something like this bird could evolve in the future. All of these four-winged dino bird depictions were only mere speculation that was until the discovery of the famous Microraptor. The four-winged prophecies became truth. A four-winged dinosaur had been discovered. And man, does this thing look a lot like William's Tetrapteryx. Right down to the tail feathers. Microraptor was a tree-dwelling dromaeosaur that possessed flight feathers on its forelimbs and its back limbs. 
It used these wings to glide from tree to tree across the forest, answering predictions 85 years in advance, and 41 years after the guy that originally made the theory had died. Number 2. A Scansoriopterid with Wings Apart from birds, for the longest time almost all scientists believe dinosaurs did not fly. And for those that are about to say that pterosaurs were dinosaurs, you are wrong, they are not. An unusual few believe that some theropod dinosaurs could evolve special wing membranes for flight like a bat. To name a few is Skull Island's Vultursaurus from the World of King Kong by Weta Workshops in 2005, a species of theropod dinosaurs that evolved bat-like wing membranes, and a couple of Dougal Dixon's designs for future dinosaur evolutions in the new dinosaurs, 1988, which are also theropods that evolve flight via membranes. But the ones to predict the closest to the truth was Andre Cow and Andre Gassler, who both predicted that a particular group of theropods would evolve flight, the Scansoriopterids. The Scansoriopterids were a group of long-fingered theropod dinosaurs. Until recently, scientists believed these long fingers were either covered in feathers or used for digging grubs out of trees like the modern eye eye. But Andre Cow, 2012, and Andre Gassler, 2013, believed that these particular dinosaurs might have possessed wing membranes used for gliding that had evolved from Scansoriopterid's long fingers. In 2013, Andre Gassler submitted his drawing of a speculative gliding dinosaur to All Your Yesterdays and got his featured in the contest, naming his submission a Scansoriopterid with wings. And guess what? All these artists predicted the future. In 2015, this year, a Scansoriopterid with wings was indeed discovered, Yi Chi. Yi Chi, known today as the real dragon, was a Scansoriopterid that evolved wing membranes to glide across the florist. All of the designs discussed earlier eerily resemble Yi Chi. Dougal Dixon predicted flying non-avian dinosaurs 27 years in advance, and Andre Cow and, An and Andre Gassler predicted a gliding Scansoriopterid three years before the fact. Amazing! Number 1. Feathered Dinosaurs Yes, children, there was once a dark age when not all dinosaurs had feathers. Before the 1970s and the discovery of Deinonychus by John Ostrom, dinosaurs were just sluggish lizards. Yes, once feathers on dinosaurs was only a theory, with zero evidence. Which is weird because birds are dinosaurs, but that's beside the point. The feathered dinosaur theory started in 1969 when John Ostrom described Deinonychus. When John Ostrom rather bravely called Deinonychus a big bird. He literally said, Deinonychus was just a big bird, not a giant lizard, most unlike what all the other dinosaurs were described as at the time. He saw that the skeleton possessed many features almost identical to that of modern day birds. He was originally called a fool and crazy, who could refute hundreds of years of reptilian lizard dinosaurs. But John Ostrom started something. He resurrected the theory that birds descended from dinosaurs created in the 1800s and was forgotten about. In a few years, the classical view of dinosaurs as long-lost reptilian monstrosities had been entirely wrecked. It would still be some time before the first feathered dinosaur would be drawn. In 1975, Robert T. Backers published The Dinosaur Renaissance. The first actually non-avian dinosaur drawing with feathers was created by Sarah Landry of a feathered Centarsis, or as we know it today, Coelophysis. She depicted a dinosaur covered in fuzz, with a very iconic mohawk of feathers. Her drawing has become a legend. She started the movement of feathering dinosaurs. Gregory S. Paul was quick to move to the new dinosaur depictions. In the late 70s, he would draw countless dinosaurs covered in proto-fuzz. He drew Allosaurus with long, shaggy proto-feathers, long before the discovery of any direct fossil evidence of feathers on dinosaurs. Other paleo artists followed. In 1979, Julian May's book The Warm-Blooded Dinosaurs featured countless dinosaurs covered in dino fuzz that we now know today did indeed possess dino fuzz, decades before we even had the first hint of fossil evidence. Dougal Dixon was quick to follow in the 1980s. He drew a few drawings for the Illustrated Dinosaur Encyclopedia, which although primarily featured scaly and accurate dinosaurs, it did indeed hint at the discovery of feathers on dromaeosaurs. Quote, The very bird-like build has made some paleontologists think that Deinonychus may have been covered with feathers. The insulation would keep the animal's temperature constant, something necessary for its active lifestyle. If you only knew. If you only knew. He also continued his feathering of dinosaurs in the new dinosaurs in 1988. Man, Dougal Dixon, are you a time traveler? Anyways, 
Now we live in a world where all dinosaurs could possess feathers. Ever since the discovery of Kalinda Dromes last year, there is a possibility all dinosaurs were feathered and that feathers were as common as hair in dinosaurs. And none of this would be possible without the early feathered dinosaur theories from John Ostrom. Sometimes, although very rarely, paleontologists predict the future of discoveries. These forward-thinking scientists rely on imagination and speculation, and sometimes what makes a difference in the scientific community. Perhaps you, the viewer, could be one of these paleo-prophets. The only way of knowing is trying and looking towards the future. So get out there. Know and understand all the current evidence, and then speculate, wonder, and imagine to answer things not known by the evidence of today, but may be known by the evidence of tomorrow. Ask questions that have not been asked already. Were dinosaurs fat? Was Dimetrodon hairy? Did whale-like dinosaurs exist? Paleontologists know a substantial amount of the world that once existed before us, but still there is much to be discovered. Who knows, you might just predict the future of how we see the past. So as always, thanks for watching.